If anyone knows me well, they'd know how much I love to travel. In dawn, my senses and all that subtly excites my heart and quietly fills my soul with light. Sitting on a Medina cafe rooftop, sipping on mint tea under a full moon. Faint Gnawa music of Jam Alifna tickles my ears as I think to myself, I had way better tea back home. Or having a walk on the clear beaches of Tangier, the smooth pebbles struck in my feet as I witnessed the sun rising over the glorious reef mountains. And in my head, a whole daydream is playing. It's the 15th century, and I'm wearing pirate leather boots and welding a pistol with one last lit bullet inside. And behind me, an army of pirates chanting, Sayyid al hurra Now, for anyone who has no idea who Sayyid al hurra is, you're about to enter the cool part of Moroccan history, friends. Sayyid al hurra held many titles throughout her life that were phenomenal, to say the least. She ruled the city of Tetuan during the Watasi rule of Morocco and roamed the western half of the Mediterranean Sea as a pirate fighting against the Spanish and Portuguese. When she accepted a marriage proposal from Ahmed al-Wattasi, king of Morocco, he had to come all the way from Fes to Tetuan to marry her. Now, perhaps she walked these shores before, and there might be a chance I'm stepping on her trail, and I wonder if she was ever told she should give up on studies and get a husband instead. Or should she lower her voice when men are talking? Or she should bulk up and get bigger, otherwise no man will want to marry her. Now, for a significant socioeconomic change to happen in a certain community, many criteria must be considered regarding everyone in that community, mental and physical well-being, as well as the change to grow and prosper within that community are some of the conditions provided for any person to ensure their personal fulfillment and productive effort in said community. So let's talk about marriage. Marriage turned from a holy institution to be built with care on solid foundations of commitment and equal responsibility with noble aims of giving the world the next generation of citizens well-balanced and capable of carrying through our greatest values and traditions to a competition. A competition between women over who's going to land the best husband. In a source of shame to those of us who did not marry and chose to focus on their academic or professional careers instead. Or simply opted out of the whole game for entirely different personal convictions. So, where did we go wrong? How did society become one which refuses to acknowledge that we are not an appendix, but we are the whole book? And giving us agency over our life choices is not the collapse of society, but the space for a future of diversity that promises prosperity in a new kind of richness. You know, one of the oldest traditions here in the Sahara has been making girls go through a strict diet, sometimes involving physical punishment, just to increase their weight. The reasons for this have to do with showing up wealth and social status and are even romanticized in some of our verbal heritage and sayings like, the bigger the woman, the bigger the space she takes in a man's heart. My heart? My heart would probably stop from too much blood pressure and cholesterol if I was on such a diet. Just kidding. What I'm trying to say today is that empowering our women has never been more of a necessity than right now. We are as much a part of this society and responsible for its prosperity as we are worthy of having the freedom to prosper ourselves. To have total autonomy over ourselves, our bodies and our futures to be armed by support, good education, and equal opportunities, instead of being victimized by vicious double standards and ruthless illiterate beliefs. What I'm claiming here is nothing new to any of us. All I'm doing is brushing the dust of gems that gave our culture that special flavor that made it stand out and persist over the centuries. Our great-grandmothers were influential scholars, fierce fighters, and well-respected matriarchs. Following in their footsteps is no more a choice, 
Waking up to the huge potential and great power is no more a choice but a necessity. Because a better future for our people starts with an empowered present for our women. Our power comes from standing together and having each other's backs. It's all about what we have in common instead of the differences imposed on us. So waking up to this power can have a positive outcome on many levels in our society. Mothers will implement equality values in their children, and young women will motivate and support each other to create mental and financial wealth. This is, at least to me, the secret to how our empowerment becomes a treasure to unveil from deep within us. And thank you.